Who would have thought that Colorado would be three and two to start the year in the first five games? Because I'll be honest, I didn't. Mm. I didn't. And now that uh, we, I thought that, you know, it was, I didn't know what we were looking at when we saw Prime and Deion Sanders. I said Prime and Deion Sanders. That's the same person. <laughs> but when we saw Deion Sanders walk into Colorado and Colorado didn't even have the money to afford Deion Sanders when they signed the deal to make him the head coach, and they're like, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, as somebody who has put things on credit before, we'll figure it out, if not generally the best financial strategy however rick george and u.s i mean uh, colorado seemed to have a plan and uh in front of jay-z beyonce apparently i don't know who else was there obama i don't know the list was long i'm being facetious about obama but if he was on the sideline of colorado <laughs> would you have been surprised i wouldn't have no nah. but uh they were in for a show today vj as uh, caleb williams for a while there had just about the same amount of touchdowns as he did incompletions throughout the first maybe three quarters of the game. It was six incompletions to six touchdowns. But Colorado came back, made it respectable towards the end. 48 to 41 final score there, easily covering the 21 and a half that they were underdogs. But did not, Colorado did not upset. That would have been their second straight win as a 21 or as a 21 or point or more underdog if they had been able to pull that one out but they didn't USC major problems on defense to me major problems i took a lot from this football game number one on the colorado side it shows that they they had a guy at the quarterback position at where's number 2 who i've said outside of Ann Arbor is my favorite college football player this year you talk about a kid that's just showing guts, showing moxie, being calm, not getting, you know, mad, pissed off, upset, snapping his chin strap and helmet because his offensive line is atrocious. That offensive line is atrocious. Mark, you called that one before the season started. You thought they were, as, as, as I, if I could quote you, light in the ass. They light in the ass. They light in the ass up front, and Martin said it. So, but it's starting to show. Gerard, Bailey, Van, BB, Washington, these these offensive linemen, these guys, and these are actually redshirt seniors, grad transfers. These are guys that have that have had playing time. And they, they have played before. You shouldn't be this bad when you have the ability of your quarterback to make plays for you. Also, too, I know Travis Hunter is not the reason why they lost to Oregon last week, but I believe he might have been the reason why they lost this game today. When you have a player like Travis Hunter that's that dominant and that good on the defensive side of the ball at the corner and slot corner and safety and Rover can pretty much play where he wants to do what he wants to do, he shuts one half of the field down. You know what that does for everybody else? It makes their job a whole lot easier, what makes them look a whole lot better. These DBs that are out there right now look confused, they look lost, and receivers are running free. They're going to fix that, I believe, on the defensive side of the ball up front, too. They're going to fix that also, too. Quick sidebar, Marshawn Lloyd, South Carolina transfer, DeMatha High School, DMV in the building, WCAC Conference. Good running back they have for SC. On the flip side of SC, Martin, they got problems. They they have problems, bro. And and this could really show up against, uh, and you know, when they have to go against Oregon, Washington State. Uh, Oregon State I'll pulls off an upset last night over Utah. It's going to show up against any team. That can dominate the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Any team, any time, because here's the thing. Even though Caleb Williams has six uh, incompletions and six touchdowns at a point throughout this game, USC's offense, and it's a, it's a hallmark of Lincoln Riley's offense, and it's something that, you know, I really want to develop this advanced stat. Any nerd out there who's like a big advanced statter, tweet me and let's talk about this. Because everybody's like, you can't run the ball. Like, running the ball, you got to throw. It's more efficient. It's more efficient. Well, possessing the ball is such a major key mm -hmm. to to winning games because when you have the ball, listen, the other I team know this it. is football 101, <laughs> but the other team doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have the ball and the other team doesn't, the other team literally cannot score. Now, if you turn it over, give it back to them, then sure, anything is possible. But if you have the ball, the other team can't score. I saw USC against Arizona State. The, uh, Saturday night after our show last week, mm -hmm. we go. Oh, this guy Scatterbo, yeah, is is running up and down that USC offense, yeah. and Marshawn Lloyd, to your point, was running up and down uh, Arizona State. They could have handed the ball to Marshawn Lloyd twenty five times this game. He would have two hundred twenty five yards rushing. Yep. I think that's probably what you would have seen had Travis Hunter been eligible. Maybe we don't see Caleb Williams with six touchdown passes, maybe three and more Marshawn Lloyd in there. I think, but the point is. USC can play that way offensively, but defensively, if Colorado had just a little bit more yeah. in the trenches, yep. they would have been able to run the ball on them. Just a guy or two. 
Not even a complete offensive line. If they had just one lineman that they can really get behind and say, listen, we're going to run to your side, maul your guy, everybody else, just come in and clean up. You can still gain three, four, five yards of carry. That sets up third and two. If you're getting five yards on first down, three yards on second down, that sets up third and three, third and two. They were in third and long all day long. And really quick to Shadir Sanders, and you guys know that's my guy, but I got to keep it a buck across the board. When your line's that bad, you can't compound things, too, by dropping your mechanics. And today I saw too many times where he drops and forgets his mechanics and he's trying to go on pure talent. That's when he throws the pick. The pick he throws is you can't make that. You can't. Yes, exactly. While you're trying to lean to outside, you're you're outside of your frame. Quarterback coaches will tell you, you got to stay in your frame. Your feet are going to go tell you where the ball is going to go. But if you're running to your right and you got your shoulders turning, you're off your back foot, the ball went right to the defensive back. It was nowhere near the corner. You can't make that throw. You have to throw that ball away and live to play another down. And whenever he feels pressure, he doesn't step up or move left to right. It's way too much backpedaling. And when you're backpedaling, that tells me that's a kid that's got a strong arm and he feels like, I can even backpedal and still make this throw. Not against top-notch competition. No, you can't. So I would like to see Shadir Sanders really clean that up as the year goes on. What I found interesting out of the Colorado side of this game is I know a lot of people probably turned it off at halftime. I didn't. Also, plus, because I had Colorado plus 21 and a half. Anyway, <laughs> so I was locked in. I was watching this whole thing. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't falling in, line with, in love with the money line, but I was watching this whole thing, and I got him again live at plus 27 and a half. Holla at your boy. But, no, so the thing that was impressive to me out of Colorado, right, you see them, they were on track to put up another stinker, right? They stunk against Oregon, crossed the board. Now, second half, Oregon come out 35-6, to six, and they only score another touchdown, right? I think, you know, as much Dan Landing was wolfing, saying, we're going to take care of this, they don't change the channel, we're going to be locked in, you know, they, I think they kind of let up off the gas a little bit, right? Yeah. But in this one, you saw guys who we have not seen before for this. Uh, Omari Miller, you heard of him before today? Outside of high school football, no. Two freshman. Carmani McClain. The whole stories about him was, how come he's not playing? How come he's not playing? Where is he at? Do yep. you know? What you saw out of this was the third straight quarter, a third straight half of lackluster effort, I'd say, out of Colorado. And you know what Deion said? Come sit next to me, champ. Yep. And I got dogs everywhere. Yep. I, I got dogs everywhere. Who wants to who play? Who wants to play? And you saw, like, to you me. You get in. <laughs> and I know, don't get me. I'm not trying to make some grand proclamation that Travis Hunter missing this game was a good thing. I think, obviously, when you have a player like that and his abilities, like, you want him on there. But do Carmani McClain and, and, and uh, Omarion Miller get the same type of run if Travis Hunter is out there? Because I think now you discovered something yep. in the second half of this game that now if you're a starter for Colorado in the defensive backfield, you know, obviously Shiloh Sanders was hurt today. I imagine he'll be back there, especially when you just look at it, the way he plays the run from the safety position. He'll be back in there. Especially and the safety was also out today. Too. I know that he's Dion's least favorite child per his rankings, <laughs> but I imagine he's, you know, he saw the backfield too, and he ain't claiming none of them as his kids. But I'm now, if I'm a starting quarterback who was putting up bad tape in the first half, I'm looking at Komani McClain like, dog, that is run my spot. That competition in practice is going to be interesting. And I'm with him. I'm with Dion. This is the worst it's gonna get. Now, it's worst it could be is seven and five, six and six. And again, that is a incredible accomplishment for a team that won one game last year. That's a huge accomplishment. And you can't take anything away from it. I still like eight wins for them because Utah showed me last night what they might truly be. I understand they're missing their quarterback. Yeah, their, they, injury, they, their they, injury report's longer than the CVS receipt. It happened. Hey, and you know what? In them CVS receipts, man, goodness gracious, I brought a humidifier the other <laughs> night. One humidifier. The, the receipt was three feet long. And I just looked at the lady. She's like, it's just a bunch of coupons and deals. I'm like, okay, cool. You that's how be. long Utah's <laughs> injury report list is. Did you watch the game last night? You yeah. watched the game last night? Yeah, I went back and watched last they, night. They had a... Uh, uh, Britton Brown, the backup, got knocked out. Yep. My poor boy, Nate Johnson, was back there running around for his life. I was like, dang. Well, hey, they hey. had a donut on the board for most of the game. They couldn't move the football and score. So they got problems without their quarterback there. But I still like eight for Colorado. I thought, you know, we talked about this. I thought Oregon and SC were going to be the two games that they 
probably wouldn't get. I would like to see him get one of them and just add more to the storyline because that's what we love in this business. But the, the, the Jimmys and Joes are going to stand up at the end of the day. Dion knows he has moves he's got to make. Guys, he's got to get in there. And like I said, and like you just said, when he came out in the second half, you can pretty much see that they were like, okay, you're out, you're out, get out. You can't get off coverage. A lot of two, a lot of uh, of Shadir Sanders scrambling and holding on to the ball is because receivers can't get off of coverage. If you can't get off of coverage to get open, open your rece- your quarterback's got to hold the football. But that changed once my man Amarion, and as soon as I saw that name, I said, yeah, I understand his parents. They must have been definitely, Bro, they definitely like, had him with wow, B2K. How old B- am I? And yeah, when Amar, because that's the only reason why his name is Amarion. There's no other reason why the guy's name is Marion because of B2K. When you put the math together, it's like true freshman, 18, 19, yep, 18, 19 years ago. Yep, that sounds about right. 106 in part, B2K, <laughs> killing it every day. But um That's all I feel when I hear something like that. Is yeah. How old am I? I like <laughs> like Brendan Rice being Jerry Rice's son exactly. playing today. Yep. That didn't make me feel that old. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That really? Was- well, because I, you know, I was, I, mean, I remember, Jerry, I remember you know. Jerry from the Raiders. I'm 34. Oh, okay, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, and I, obviously I know my history, but it's just like I wasn't watching Jerry Rice like that. But like, see, yeah, that that made me feel like like Deion Sanders being the coach, like seeing Shador Sanders, that made me feel old. Not yet. Not yet. Because Deion Sanders to me was is an NFL Network commentator. That's how I was introduced to Deion Sanders. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, as a wow. kid. Oh god. You know, yeah. like obviously wow, yeah. now I know my history. Yeah. But I, I never saw it. I didn't see it live. I wasn't watching it live. But I tell you what, watching a kid named Omarion, and then the other thing, <laughs> other thing, they got they got a, a few. I think uh, USC's got a Kobe Bryant, and I know there's Seattle a has a Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Bryant. Yeah, there's a few Kobe Bryant. I'm in just like, football. dog. Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm not supposed to be this old yet. Kid's name Kobe.